Good morning and welcome to our blog. It's Mike and Arlen, our Philippine journey. It's a gorgeous, overcast, semi-rainy day here in the province. We're sitting on the balcony of our, uh, the second floor balcony of our master bedroom. We uh, spent the very first night in our master bedroom. It's nowhere near done, but it's close. Uh, this is uh, on Sony E10 shooting uh, uh, high def 60 frames, uh, which I'll uh, render back down or I'll upload. Yeah, I'll render it back down to 30 frames. Um, using the internal mic with the, uh, oh, whatever you want to call it, windscreen on it. And. Uh, while it's a crappy day so far, and yesterday was a rainy day, which is why I really didn't have anything, uh, we've been working with the construction guys uh, and going through stuff. And I got to tell you, I'm impressed. You know, the biggest problem, if you look at videos from the uh, Philippines or from any tropical uh, developing country mm, you what you're gonna see is a lot of construction they construct stuff as they can um, and so one of the last things to take care of is painting and stuff like that because they're rather put the money towards you know construction uh, other than painting well the byproduct of that is uh, since everything is built with center block or hollow block, it soaks up water. And, and then it soaks up water in this hot, humid, nasty uh, environment sometimes. Uh, and a couple of different things happen. The first one is, is of course, you get mold. Uh, the second thing that happens is, is, is well, I'll, I'll go into that in just a, a minute. You get this mold. So for us, when we finally closed in the house, we got the roof done and, and the sides built and the windows in, it was time to paint. <clears throat> and our construction guys were using a different one than the actual builders. <clears throat> First they put on a uh, waterproofing like it's, it's almost like a liquid tile is, is, is the American translation for it, but it's not liquid tile. Then they put on a special skim coat. It's Mondo SK1, which is a waterproof skim coat, which is uh, more attuned to something like stucco in the US or plaster almost. Uh, a little bit more resilient than plaster. Uh, actually, a lot more resilient than plaster. Plaster is not an external uh, application, to the best of my knowledge. Uh, and then they paint. And in our instance, we used a very, very high grade rain, shine, waterproof paint. And I am really impressed. Um, on the balcony and I'll, I'll try and show it to you or I'll at least in, if I can't show it to you in the video I'll, I'll include a photo we have like a little little wall here and I'll, I'll try and let's see if we can see this so this is the tile and we still have to clean the, the tile floors but if you you look you've got this three foot wall two and a half foot wall around the balcony and look at the water puddling up. This is from the rain last night. And hey, that's impressive. Because what it really means is it's not soaking up into <clears throat> the hollow block. The whole sides of the house, everything, the entire exterior of the house was done this way um, and it was a little bit more expensive actually uh, uh, in fact 
it costs me almost as much to prep paint, uh, to prep, apply the waterproofing, apply the skim coating and paint this house as it cost me for a standard house paint uh, on our Phoenix house. Now, granted, the guys on the Phoenix house only had to do some minor stucco crack repair, uh, and then they spray paint and rolled uh, both. But, you know, my, my Phoenix house is three times as much surface area as this house was. Uh, it was, by Philippine standards, expensive. Cost me about, I want to say, let me, let me figure this out real quick. Um, it's a hundred and sixty-five thousand, hundred and sixty-five thousand divided by let's call it fifty-six. Cost me three grand, which um, was way outside my budget. But now I'm glad I did it now because of uh, what the results are that I see so far. I'm really happy. I mean. The water just slides right off the sides of the house. It doesn't get absorbed by anything. Um, I'm really impressed. <clears throat> so we're shooting this morning. Sony E10 kit lens aperture. Uh, I'm, I'm on an aperture program instead of the intelligent mode. Uh, it's in overcast. So it's not a bright backlight, but there's some backlighting to this, I assume. And uh, those are the technical, uh, you know, high def at uh, 60 frames per uh, 60 frames. Uh, and we'll take a look at that. I think right now we're running about a, a 6.3, pretty, pretty high uh, aperture, but it does adjust a little bit. Uh, ISO 100. So we'll be interested to see how this kind of turns out. The plans for today <clears throat> are to get them to finish cleaning this patio in particular. They still have to finish the back of the house before it's completely done. So the plans for today are uh, for them to finish cleaning the patios, the front patio, the rear patio for the you know which is a pretty big area for the dirty kitchen, this balcony because part of the deal was they're going to clean up everything, and they've done a good job so far. They took half the scaffolding down yesterday and put it up and back. Um, uh, but they've got to get all the excess skim coat and excess um, uh, skim coat and paint off the tile. That's really important to get that done. Because the one thing we did not do was we did not seal the tile yet. So this has all got to be clean and then all got to be sealed. And normally they don't seal tile here, to be honest with you, uh, outside. I had a lot of uh, success with that in Phoenix, sealing the outside tile. Now granted, the tile I sealed in... Phoenix was all stone. It was either flagstone or um, uh, another type of stone or pavers. One of the, the, all three of those substances we sealed up. And that really worked well, but I had to acid wash everything because it was something I didn't know or learn to do prior to. Uh, the other thing that we did yesterday, and here's what's also surprising. I need to put in baseboards um, upstairs, because upstairs is all hardwood flooring. So I need baseboards. And the reason I need baseboards is so that when we clean and mop, we're not getting stuff on the walls. And uh, with that being said... Uh, I said, okay, I've got my miter saw, I've got everything set up, or not set up, but readily now available uh, to start cutting up baseboard. 
my original intention was just like in the US. You buy a wooden baseboard and you start cutting away and installing. You know, and if you're smart, you paint or stain it first. So that, you know, you, you don't have that big mess going forward. So I went and bought, I went, we went yesterday in the rain to City Hardware in Surigao. And I was amazed at the price of wood. So one approximately 10 foot section of four inch, very simple baseboard, wooden baseboard was $11, and that was like ridiculous. I mean, just, just ridiculous. And again, this goes back to the simple fact that there's not so much in the way of hardwood here. I mean, you, coca lumber, yeah, but you can't use coca lumber for baseboard. You've got to use not so much a, a hardwood, but you've got to use a resilient wood and we don't have pine here. So, what they do have is a synthetic, I don't know, semi-plastic, but synthetic wood that they use for this type of stuff as well. So I got a piece of that, had them chop it in half, and uh, though we won't get to it today, within the next couple of days, once the, the tile is all done and ready to go up here on the balcony, this is where I'll set up the uh, miter saw, and I'll start playing with the miter saw because I've never used one before, I've never done it before, I don't know what all is involved in it, I'm hoping I can do it. it doesn't look that difficult from YouTube, but hey, you know, watch one YouTube and you're an expert. So, with all that being said, those are our plans for today to try and get the rest of this stuff done um, and get everything else situated. Uh, it was nice this morning to sit out here and uh, have my coffee. I'm still having it. And I'm happy to say that I'm not sure what kind, and I'm going to try uh, uh, to get some photos, but again, this was kind of an experimental thing, so I don't have a, you know, any extra bigger lenses with me, but I'm going to try to get some photos of eagles. I noticed back during the construction that about 300, 400 yards away, there's a coconut farm, and then about another 300, 400 yards from that, there's another coconut farm. And I used to see some sort of eagle. They're definitely bigger than hawks, all right? And they're not buzzards. I've never seen a buzzard or a vulture here. I've seen big-ass crows, but these are way bigger, okay? So these are, are some sort of eagle. And they either live out there, and I see them circling quite often, or about, I don't know, maybe two miles away. I don't know if you can see it, but that's actually, it's not very impressive on this camera. That's actually a small mountain range. Um, they live up there in those jungles. Uh, I don't know which, but either way, um, they're still around. In fact, I saw them this morning, then I saw them again a little later, and usually you start to see them uh, uh, right around noontime, believe it or not. I, I guess maybe because back there went one, I think. Uh, right around noontime, yes, there is one. Wait a second. Uh, he's way out there. I'll never get him on camera. But, I mean, you figure this guy's got to be a good 500 yards away, 300 to 500 yards, and uh, maybe 600 feet off the ground, 300 feet, 600 feet off the ground. And by my, I, you know, he's like this big, 
That means he's actually pretty damn big. So they're around. And I'm going to try and get some photos of them. I don't think I could get anything on video that would be of, of uh, viewable looking. But either way, bottom line is, that's kind of our plans for today. Um, in a couple more days, we're going to have a list ready to go to head to Butuan for another pickup. Uh, we'll hit the grocery store in Butuan to pick up stuff. Although I'm impressed, super impressed uh, with, we went to the a small grocery store in Butuan yesterday and I was able to get cornflakes, which I know is nothing to you guys, but cornflakes is an important, you know, Kellogg's cornflakes are, and imported food here. Um, I was able to get a large box of cornflakes, the jumbo family size of cornflakes. Very reasonable, like uh, about $4.50. In fact, if anybody knows, what does a, the, the big family size corn, Kellogg's cornflakes, box of cornflakes cost in the U.S.? I'd be interested to know compared to what I just paid. I do know, I, I don't eat cereal much, but I do like it from time to time. And it's something simple and easy here to uh, start my day with rather than have Arlen up and around cooking and, you know, between the construction guys and, and everybody in and out. And an update on the chicken will be coming so either way hey if you made it this far i'm really impressed uh please subscribe hit that thumbs up share it do whatever comment love to hear it love to see it and have a great day